They don't call it the dog days of summer for nothing. For some, work dries up during this time and cash is scant after spending on vacations with your family. So how do you beat the summer money slump? Well, this is a real treat for us here. We'd like to welcome Howard Dvorkin in the flesh. He's chairman of <laughs> Debt.com. He's joining us in studio for the first time all the way from South Florida. It's good to see you. Thank you so much for having me and it's a pleasure being here. Uh, you know, it's so exciting. It was great to, to meet you over our virtual Skype interview views last year, but this is even better, so hopefully we can make this a habit. I am more than happy to come up anytime you'll have Okay, me. good. So we're talking about money slumps during the summer, so was I hitting the mark pretty I much? I think is so. It I mean, listen, this is a summer like no other summer. Yeah. We have a lot of pent-up demand in travel and spending. People have been cooped up in their houses oh, yeah. for probably almost 18 months, and, and they're spending money. They're out there traveling. And the problem is, I think once the bills come rolling in, I think people are going to be a little bit surprised because at the same time, yeah. all the stimulus programs end and all the deferments end. So people are gonna get a double, a double hit yeah. there. So you I, did warn us about this though. I did. You I did, did warn us about this because when those bills start rolling in, it's going to be fall, and then we're looking ahead to the holiday season, so you're gonna have quite it, the hefty credit card bill. It's going up. to be a rough few months for yeah. a lot of people, but the fact of the matter is, it doesn't have to be. Mm -hmm. People can go through and figure out how to budget and, and take it slowly. They don't have to go out and spend all this money. And the fact of the matter is people need to figure out where they are. There's something called, it's a very simple calculation called a dead income ratio. Mm -hmm. It's how much your, your bills are divided by how much you're taking home. Some people like to say, take your bills, your mortgage, your, your car payments, and your credit cards, add them up, and divide them by your gross amount. I like net after tax because yes. that's a true indication of oh, how yeah. much money you have. And if you're spending 50% of your, your take home, maybe you need to look at that a little closer. Absolutely, and also if I can just throw in another wrinkle and that is inflation because we've been talking a lot about inflation. You brought it up as well in a previous interview that we did. And so we're seeing costs of things, everything going up. Let's face it, everything is getting more yeah. expensive. Whether it's gas, whether it's food, America is getting, it's getting hit pretty hard with this. Uh, there should be some relief, at least on fuel. Uh, it looks like production is, is going up. slowly starting to come down too. Well, bit. production is going up. OPEC is, uh, has agreed to increase production. Mm -hmm. So that'll bring the fuel prices down. But listen, we gotta get this country back to work. People have to get back to work because it's not only uh, a, a problem with getting people back to work, but they have no materials to work with. That's true, that is true. Another piece of advice is don't feel like you have to keep up with your neighbor. Let's face it, keeping up with the Joneses is stupid. How do you know that the Joneses don't have worse, That's true. worse financial problems than you do? Yeah. They may be driving the big car. They may be living in a nicer house and taking vacations you don't have insight into their credit card bills or their bank accounts. The fact of the matter is, playing that game, you will lose, because somebody somewhere is always gonna have something better than you. So you have to be careful not to fall victim to that Absolutely. game. Absolutely, and before we take a break for this commercial, I wanna go through one more, and that is charge it less. So you're talking about putting things on credit cards, well, don't do it. Don't do it, use yeah. cash, pay your bills, but at the end of the day, try to take a step back. Do you really need that $200 pair of shoes or will the $100 pair of shoes oh, take? Okay, okay, you're different, you're different, you're different, you're different, but guys, guys, Go for the cheaper shoes. <laughs> <laughs> go, for the, go for the flip flops at the dollar store, which I have done plenty of times. I'm sure you have. Yes, I, I can be smart with my money too. This is a great place to take a break, so when we come back, more from Howard Dvorkin. Don't go anywhere.
Welcome back. We're here with Howard Devorgan, chairman of Debt.com, and we've been talking about the summer money slump and just how you can avoid some of the pitfalls of finding yourself in dire straits come fall. Uh, the last thing that we left with our audience was charge it less. So really just don't use the credit cards if you don't have to. Um, but moving on, track your spending. And I think this is where a lot of people get tripped up because you don't want to necessarily pay attention to that growing number. You don't, but you have to sit down yeah. and spend at least a half hour doing it. And the fact is, there's plenty of computer programs out there that'll do it for you. They even connect to your bank account and that your spending gets downloaded. The fact of the matter is, in order to start to move forward, you gotta figure out where you are. Mm. So track your spending, I promise. It gets easier and quicker, but you have to do it. Just rip the Band-Aid off and just do it. Just do it. I know, the thought of it, it, it sounds like you get kind of bogged down by things, but really at the end of the day, you will get used to it. It's like eating your vegetables. You, you may will. not like it at first, but you, you but get used to it. But how can you move forward without knowing where you are? Well, that is so true. And, and planning purchases, so here's another tip. So don't just go out and spend money without having a list. We've talked about this We've in the past We've talked too, about you know. this over Christmas. Yes, But, but the fact list. of the matter is, if you have a big purchase, you want to go on vacation, you want to buy new furniture, save for it. Yes, there is something called savings. <laughs> so save for that and go through and make sure that you have the money so it doesn't go on credit cards because a thousand dollar purchase on a credit card that's charging you 15% interest is gonna cost you $1,400 no matter what in what deal you're getting. That is true, that is true. And how about adjust your spending? Because you don't necessarily, like going to the grocery store, for instance, I buy a lot of stuff in the, the store brand, not necessarily the name brand. You're it's a smart same lady, product. that's why. Well, I've learned a couple of things since talking to you, Howard. <laughs> uh, but really though, you, you don't have to get the name brand of stuff. Right. And it's a lot less, it's, it's a lot less. And you get the same thing. You're paying for marketing. Right. And chances are, the store brands are made by the name brand companies, just private labeled. That is interesting, it is true, I've heard that before. Absolutely. How about boosting your income? So what can you do to put more money in your coffers? Listen, whether it's a one-time job or you get a gig job, you, you do Uber, you cut, cut the grass, people's grasses, whatever. Yeah. I would say shoveling uh, snow on, uh, <laughs> yeah. but not there's not a lot so of snow much, no. down in these parts. <laughs> But I will tell you that whether you can increase income, just add, add to the kitty and make that extra money go towards savings or paying down the debt or a combination of the two. And didn't you have a relative who did that and it's turned into a full-fledged business, a absolutely, jewelry business? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, how did that work for her? That is a terrific, uh, it turned out to be a great business and basically you know, they have a full-time career now. So a part-time career turned into a full-time career and it just gets better and now they're self-employed. So. It's almost like when push comes to shove, you start learning stuff about yourself, discovering talents that you never knew existed and then it becomes something more. More, more importantly, if you're hungry, yeah. if you are having to do this, you, most of us don't work because we like to work. Right. Except me, I like to work. Yeah. But, <laughs> Most of us work because we have to, and if you could find something that you enjoy doing, you're gonna be better at it. Absolutely, I think that's a great note to end on, and I can't wait to see you the next time. Great. Thank you so Thank much, you Howard. Thank you so Good much to for see having you. me. We're back after this.